Before you start an inspection, make sure you have everything you need. Our inspection forms are usually filled out digitally using a tablet, but paper forms could also be used in some cases. The one I'm using today might look different than the one you'll be using, but the information will be mostly the same. You'll also need personal protective equipment, which will change depending on which site you're inspecting. For this maintenance yard, I'm wearing my uniform and steel toe boots. Some sites may require you to wear a hard hat, safety vest, safety glasses, and possibly hearing protection. It's a good idea to bring a camera and flashlight. I use my phone as a flashlight and take pictures using the tablet. You might also have some outreach material which can be used to educate the facility staff about stormwater pollution and best management practices. Digital versions of these pamphlets will usually be emailed to the facility contact, but if you have paper copies, bring them along too. So when I arrive at the site, I'd like to take a, a review of the site to see what issues might be impacting uh, stormwater. Um, for example, just looking at this site in general, it looks like it's um, in the shape of a basin, so everything's going downhill. Um, so anything that might um, spill up here or any, any non-stormwater discharge up here could potentially run off onto this property, so the facility folks need to be uh, prepared or aware for that, that type of situation. Also looking at it, I can tell that the Los Gatos Creek is uh, bordering or on the perimeter of this facility. So that's a real close uh, natural water source and they have to be real careful to prevent any runoff um, since it will go directly to the creek. In this video, you'll have the chance to learn how to perform a stormwater inspection by watching me inspect a local facility. But make sure you pay attention to the big picture. You'll be inspecting all sorts of different facilities, each one with unique sites and a variety of business activities. Use the general principles in this video to guide your inspection process. One thing I noticed driving down the driveway, we have some track out here on the driveway. It needs to be cleaned up, so I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of that for the facility. Another thing I noticed is that we have a container over here that must have fallen off a truck. It's a container of grease and it's already spilled a little bit. Um, certainly they can clean that up, but if it rains, that has the potential to run contaminants off into the storm drain system. So that is definitely an issue I'll be bringing up with the facility. Good morning, I'm Lindsay from Santa Clara County Fire Department. I'm here to do your stormwater inspection. Great, I'm Ron Termin, I'm the facilities manager. How can I help? It would be great if you could walk the site with me. Sure, sounds good. Well, first you could uh, just give me a general layout of what, uh, what you have here. This here out here is where our vehicles are. This facility manager is very accommodating and friendly, but you might run across some facility managers who aren't excited about you inspecting their property. If you encounter any resistance, politely explain that this is a mandatory inspection and their cooperation is appreciated. If you're denied entrance, note it on the inspection report and the West Valley Clean Water Authority will follow up. And of course, you should always ask the facility manager to walk the site with you. Some facilities you will inspect are required to have a stormwater pollution prevention plan, and the purpose for that is for them to detail their pollution prevention strategy as well as outline their best management practices that they will be using on site to prevent stormwater pollution. I'm going to start by looking at their site map as well as verify their business information, make sure everything looks accurate and correct. And with their site map, I'm going to focus on the industrial areas as well as the locations of their catch basins or storm drains and the locations of their spill control equipment. Usually the best way to conduct an inspection is to work through the inspection form step by step. But your inspection form might look different than this one and you might even be combining this stormwater inspection with other inspections you need to perform at the facility. I'm going to use the stormwater inspection form provided by the West Valley Clean Water Authority to guide you through all of the things our stormwater permit requires us to inspect. So let's get started by evaluating what business functions happen here, and then we'll walk the site and take a look at those specific areas. To start with, using the West Valley form, we're going to look at outdoor process and manufacturing areas. I'm going to mark that as not applicable. This is a maintenance yard, and most likely they won't be making or handling anything here. Outdoor material storage areas, yes. Outdoor waste storage and disposal areas, yes. Outdoor vehicle and equipment storage and maintenance areas, yes. Outdoor parking areas and access roads. Yep. Outdoor wash areas. Yes, we do. We have that right behind me. Outdoor drainage from indoor areas or rooftop equipment. Yes. Contaminated or erodible surface areas. I don't see that, uh, but as we walk the site, I may come across that. So I could tentatively mark that as no, um, but I can always change that later. 
Other sources determined to have a potential to contribute to pollution of stormwater runoff? Well, that's yet to be determined, so we'll figure that out as we walk the site. With parking areas, we're going to pay attention to any leaking vehicles or any pieces of equipment that might have fuel or oils in them that could be leaking as well. So, Ron, it looks like this vehicle's uh, been through a collision. When a vehicle's been in a collision, it's likely going to be leaking. So, I'm going to check under here and see if we have any active leaks. Good. I don't. I don't see any active leaks. So, we'll just keep moving on. There's a big overreaching concept you should be aware of when conducting an inspection. We call it good housekeeping, and it's literally about how neat and tidy the staff keeps the facility. Do they sweep? Is the yard messy? Are there things laying about exposed to the weather that could be covered? Is the staff well trained for their jobs and about pollution prevention? It seems simple, but many cases of stormwater pollution could have been prevented if the facility practiced good housekeeping. So you've got an asphalt patch here. Um, I'm glad to see that you've acknowledged a potential um, like drips from the equipment and that you've put a drip pan down. So I'm actually going to take a picture of that. It's a good, Great. it's a good example. So I'm taking a look at one of the two catch basins on site. And I'm glad to see that it's labeled. Could be a little bit cleaner, but at least they've got it properly marked. I'm going to take a picture of it. If the facility has a fuel rack, check for evidence of fuel drips or spills, which would definitely be potential pollutant sources. Also verify the site has a nearby spill kit to respond to any spills. This rack looks great, so no issues. No nearby storm drains either. Well, I see you've got uh, one of the absorbent stations here. Okay. Great. We're doing, uh, we're taking a look at the maintenance building and what we're looking for is evidence of spills or materials um, tracking and getting, making their way outside of the building. We don't need to go inside and take a look at an, um, anything uh, inside, but we want to see if we got any evidence of spills or materials making their way outside. To start off with, I, I see we've got this pallet here, Ron. Do you know what, what the story is with, with this material? We just had this delivered today. These are uh, bags of actually yeah, absorbent. Uh, we need to get those stored inside. Normally those are stored inside on our pallet rack here. Okay. Um, just haven't got to it yet, but they, they do need to get put away. Yeah, okay, yeah. We'll just get those inside today. Sure. So what, what is this material here? That is uh, road patch uh, for potholes, uh, cracks and stuff like that. Um, you can see one of our bags is ripped. We'll get that taken care of uh, right away also. Perfect, yeah, let's do that. That definitely has the potential to make its way outside. Okay. And these right here, are these um, just garbage and recycle bins? Yes, these are all recycle bins. And they look good. I don't see any signs of leaking. I also see another downspout. Looks good. This is a garbage can? Yes. Okay. Uh, preferably we like lids on them, uh, but it is over the overhang, so, but I would say since it's outside, let's put a lid on it. Okay, no problem. Oh, excuse me, sir. Yes. What are you doing there? I was about to wash these mats here. Okay, yeah, you, you can't do that outside here. Uh, you need to do that either over a mop sink if you have one, okay. or a bermed area with a sanitary gotcha. sink. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, I think we have mop sinks, so I'll take it over there. Perfect, okay, thank you. Thank you. When you encounter an active pollution issue, act quickly to stop the discharge. Anytime you observe a potential pollutant source, write it down on your inspection report. Okay, so we have one more area to cover here, and that's the wash rack. Uh, but before I talk about that, I see that we have some more garbage cans that need to have lids. Okay, we'll get those covered also. Great. Okay, and it looks like your wash rack area is sloped, so uh, sloped down to this drain. So, Ron, where does this drain lead to? This is uh, connected to the sanitary uh, sewer system. Okay, great. Um, all right. What about that drain down there? 
Uh, that actually is a storm drain catch basin. That actually discharges into Los Gatos uh, Creek right behind us. Here. Okay, so I see a potential for a discharge there being so close to the wash rack. So it's really important that the wash water get contained in this sloped area and, and with this drain there. So. Um, definitely practice your best management practices because remember only rain is supposed to go to the storm drain. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Once you've completed your inspection and walked around the entire yard, make sure to debrief with the facility manager before you leave. If you see anything that is a potential pollutant source, now is the time to bring it up. So this concludes my inspection today and I think overall the facility did really good, it looks really good. Um, there's some good areas to highlight and that would be your fuel island for example. Nice and clean, I don't see any fuel spills there. Um, the vehicles in, in the parking lot don't appear to be leaking and the one um, asphalt um, vehicle that you have does have a, an oil pan. You guys put an oil pan under there because of potential drips and so that was a good best management practice. Uh, wash rack looks good. Um, so, it, and, and of course you've got absorbent stations stationed um, throughout the facility for easy access. So that's, those are good, good BMPs. And so some of the areas to focus on or some areas that need to be cleaned up. Well, first of all, the, um, the mat washing. Also, uh, there was a pallet of material that was outside. So that should be moved inside as quickly as possible. Also, I observed some um, track out on the drive in. Uh, and, a, and a container out there on the driveway. So, uh, oh, and the trash cans. We had a, a number of trash cans that needed to have lids okay. on the outside. So let's work on that. So I'll, um, I'll issue an inspection report. Okay. I'll also be sending that to the West Valley Clean Water Program Authority. Okay. And they'll be following up with you on um, the, uh, the issues that need to be cleaned up. Okay. okay. I'm gonna give you a pamphlet with some guidelines for best management practices to help um, with some guidance on Performing a stormwater inspection really isn't hard. You're just walking through the entire site, keeping your eyes open for potential pollutant sources. Remember, West Valley Clean Water Authority is responsible for enforcement response, not you. It's your job to inspect the facility, inform the facility manager of any potential issues you find, and report your findings to the Clean Water Authority, who will handle any needed follow-up. Of course, if you come across an active discharge, you should do all in your power to stop the discharge. We've got one more video where we're going to talk about best management practices and ways that facilities can prevent stormwater pollution.